take a good look at these images. Do you know what they are? Do you even know what they mean? Well, today's show has all those answers for you. Hi, everybody. This is Anna Marie Sinatra, host of Health Matters. And I am so excited because I'm at the Dent Imaging Center. I'm going to bring you some amazing information. So get those pens and papers ready. And before we get started, let's hear a word from our sponsors. I'm Kathleen Maxian with the Western New York Ovarian Cancer Project. And we're a proud sponsor of Health Matters. Our mission is to educate the Western New York community on the symptoms and risks of ovarian cancer. We also have supportive programs for women who have ovarian cancer, including professionally facilitated support groups, our Cancer Answers Workshop, and our signature Comfort and Hope Tote program. Continue to watch Health Matters, and we'll continue to educate you on ovarian cancer. Dent Neurologic Institute is proud to support Health Matters. Dent Neurologic Institute offers neurologic education, state-of-the-art diagnostics, and cutting-edge clinical research. If you or someone you know is looking for more information, visit our website at dentinstitute.com. Electronic Merchant Systems is proud and honored to bring you such creative educational television as Your Health Matters. We believe in We Educate and You Decide. here with Dr. Joseph Fritz, who is the CEO here at Dent. Thank you, doctor, for inviting us to come in and interview you. It's a pleasure. It's and a pleasure. Thank you for visiting us. Oh, Anna Marie. you're very welcome. It's our pleasure and our honor. This is so exciting. You have so much information to share, um, but before we even get into the history mm -hmm. of imaging, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to this area and what you've been doing. Oh, well, thank you for asking. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a somewhat different story as to how I ended up where I'm at, but I think it helps to define the dent Absolutely. in terms of what I found so fascinating about it when I came. Uh, I have history in Buffalo and knew the folks at the dent for, for many years, but I had been a clinical scientist for an imaging company, and in that role I was overseeing research in imaging in North America. Wow. And so I had a wonderful opportunity to be involved with many wonderful places, University of Michigan, Johns Hopkins University, as well as many small practices and large practices. And through that it was very exciting because those centers were on the cutting edge of research and imaging. And what we always tried to do in the position that I was in in the research was to help guide development towards clinically meaningful tools. Ah. Well, when I met uh, Dr. Metzler at a conference. Uh, I had come from California, he came from Buffalo, and we started talking about the next step in the evolution of the dent. Recognizing that the dent's history, it's now 51 years, wow. uh, 52 years in uh, a few months. Yes. It, uh, it started back in 1963. And through that whole period of time, the dent had been focused on the entire clinical comprehensive picture that integrated the care for the patient with research, with education, and bringing all the technology that would be appropriate for the care of those patients under one roof. So there weren't missed steps and miscommunication and there's a complete knowledge. And the way it was described to me was, Joe, your management background and your science background is just a perfect match to come in and just lead the organization wow. because we're a scientific led right, organization. Right, right. We're compassionate for our patients. We just want to do the right thing. And so um, it was such, just so attractive. So our family up and moved from California wow. to come back to Snowy Buffalo. So I just have to ask you, yes, how much do you like Snowy <laughs> Buffalo? <laughs> uh, we, we, we love it here. Oh, and, and good. And it is, 
I, I think an important point to underscore is the, the dent is unique in, in that model. Uh, university research might be 10, 15 years out uh, on what it develops that will be relevant. Uh, other clinical centers are entirely focused on today's clinical work, but in the dent model, what a, what a perfect mix of trying to do very relevant research that is very meaningful for our patients in the very near future. Exactly. And, and that's what I found to be just so exciting about coming here. So I've been nothing but happy since Well, let me tell you that as I do my homework, that I am impressed over and over again with each of the different doctors that are here and what you bring to this area in terms of cutting edge, state of the art help for all of us here. And, and part of that is what I learned today in the hallway as we looked at the uh, history of DENT, how DENT is uh, the beginner of the, well, you explain it best, the, the uh, pioneer in terms of imaging. Well, so um, I think what's, what's nice is that the DENT recognizes that it doesn't exist on its own. It works in a very collaborative way. And, and collaboration means with other scientists throughout the community, including those that are in industry. And, when the dent was formed back in 1963 by Dr. William Kinkle, who is semi-retired, although still very active, <laughs> sharp as can be, uh, he developed clinical research trials on a, a drug product related to the care for Parkinson's. So right at the very beginning, he was very involved in what are solutions that might be available that we can start to mm -hmm. do some research that will have an immediate benefit for our patients. And in fact, uh, Mr. Harry Dent, an entrepreneur in the community, was one of those that was treated and then became the namesake of the Dent wow. Neurologic Institute. So right wow. from the beginning, it's this cooperation with those that develop cutting-edge tools. In the 70s, those tools evolved from just the pharmaceutical tools that neurologists and clinicians use all the time to the technology of imaging. Um, many people looked at the first CT that was being introduced being designed just in the labs as way too expensive and what's its value and I can get enough out of x-rays, why do I need a CT? And Dr. Kinkle flew to England, realized the benefits because as a clinician it takes care of the brain and now he has these views he never had before. Wow. Became like the third installation of a CT in the United States That's based amazing. on that encounter. That's amazing. So it, it, dates, it dates all the way back. Imaging has just continued to evolve and so the board that you're speaking of is how so many different imaging evolutions have occurred ever since those that, that era of the 70s. Yes, tell us a little bit about that, how the evolution has gone uh, on its timeline in leading us up to today. It primarily focused in the early days on any technology that could be applied to neurology. And imaging in neurology shortens to neuroimaging. So the tool that first became available, as I mentioned, was CT, computer axial tomography, used to be abbreviated CAT scans, now is computed tomography, CT. In the, <laughs> yeah. in the 80s, uh, manufacturers started to realize, wow, there's real value in this x-ray based technology, but a new technology back then, which had been developed called MRI, was looking at a different characteristic of the body. It wasn't looking at bone and density so much as it's looking for water content and the soft tissue characteristics. And the brain is basically jello. <laughs> but when you applied MRI as opposed to x-ray technology, you could determine differences in anatomy and pathology so incredibly precise on an MRI that you couldn't see on a CT. Oh, wow. So they became very complementary. Okay. Very complimentary. So for, uh, for those that are watching today at home, mm -hmm. help bring that down to, because I'm, I'm, I'm a viewer. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So, so tell us how, a little bit more, in layman's terms, the differences between the MRI and the CT, and how it relates to um, the decrease in radiation as well for these different images. So basic x-rays that you would have for a chest x-ray, um, are, are, that's essentially the the principles on which a CT works. But you're collecting those images from many different views. So instead of just getting a shadow, uh, uh -huh. you're getting x-rays from many views. And, and so you're able to develop computer algorithms that if you can look at things from 360 degrees with enough views, you can 
iteratively, iteratively reconstruct what's on what's on the inside. And I think that's what you've done with some of the things that are right <laughs> on your desk, yeah. if I'm not so mistaken. It, it's, uh, it, it's particularly useful when you have uh, hard density components. So mm -hmm. this is a spine that shows the vertebral bodies. Uh, it is images constructed at half millimeter increments and then sent to one of these 3D uh, tools that are able to generate the model. That's so incredible. the precise characteristics of the CT can be used to create a, a model. Right and I'm sure that. when you have this a type of model like this, it helps you to understand better what's going on with your patient. Yeah, and, and the models can be useful for surgeons. They can also be useful for helping to explain to a patient. They become more ah. visual. Looking at some images as we tend to look at them, these cross sections, may be a little more difficult to understand where am I looking. And I'll show you some examples of those. 3D models can be interesting visual aids. Absolutely. Rather than just, you know, the right, skeleton that right. hangs up in the anatomy lab. This is you right there. So the, the other model that I have here is is an MRI. It came from uh, the type of an imaging that doesn't use so much the bone type characteristics, the high density characteristics, as much as trying to de determine the differences between soft tissues. And the brain itself has a lot of convolutions that are very evident in the MRI. So you can see the structure, but also we'll see in some of the images how you can really determine the internal structure so elegantly. Both CT and MRI can do brain imaging and spine imaging. CT tends to be somewhat more useful when you're trying to look at characteristics of bone or in some cases if you're looking at blood vessels when you put a certain type of a contrast agent into them to outline the blood vessels. MRI tends to be very useful at looking at soft tissue characteristics and while the CT can see them they tend to be more bland and the MRI is able to that distinguish is parts. so helpful because I can't tell you how many times people are confused and don't understand what the, dis the distinctions are, what the differences are, and why doctor would choose one over the other. Mm -hmm. It's very helpful. I hope you're taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> so over the, uh, the course of time, both technologies have evolved substantially. Uh, CT has a resolution, if I would say, uh, limitation in that each, each slice is a certain thickness and then you can you can reconstruct a, a three-dimensional volume, but only to the degree that you can get a really thin slice. And just the x-ray technology has had to evolve over the years to get very, very resolved and be able to generate these 3D. And so is that when you're talking about the 320 slice <coughs> Toshiba mm -hmm. Aqualine 1 CT scanner? I'll help you with Don't that. Don't I sound? Let me, let me help you with that. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are several points to be made about uh, the, the CT scanner revolution, and, and one of them is this. When the first CT scanners came out, uh, you would have one very thin slice. The, the x-ray tube would rotate around, get a slice, move down to the next, get a slice, move down to the next, oh. get a slice. And you would only look at it in this type of a cross-sectional uh -huh. way. Step forward about 30 years in development, and now instead of having these individual slices, there's a very wide, what they call it, a detector array, and this whole big, what they call, cone beam that shoots out. So in one revolution of only a quarter of a second, roughly, you're able to collect all the information for that entire section. So, for example, the entire brain, the entire heart, big sections of the body in a quarter of a second. A quarter of a second. And the resolution wow. is can be resolved down to about a quarter of a millimeter, Wow. And as a result, you're able to do these amazing reconstructions as seen here, and I'll show you a few it examples absolutely too. absolutely incredible, isn't it? We're so excited to live in the age where we can have these imaging and, and such great care for our challenges that come, right? Well, well so we like, the, we like the technology, and we like the technology, and MRI, it's gotten faster, and it's become more precise. MRI has evolved in what I would say is more functional these days. And I'll show you some examples of what functional means, but there's just amazing things that can come out of the toolkit uh, in MRI that is not looking so much at the density of tissue, but how that tissue might be responding to certain stimuli or chemical characteristics that amazingly can be pulled out of MRI. So both technologies have evolved to being very fast, very much information about 
the functional status of an organ that gives such great insights. So this just gives an idea of, of how the CT scanner has evolved. It used to be just a thin slice and you'd have to move the body back and forth in order to be able to see it. Now you can just, in one single rotation, you can get an entire view of the brain. That well, is what, incredible. Well, I'll ask you a question. Why does that matter? This is why it matters. Wow. Look at the blood flow <laughs> being tracked as it comes up wow. from your neck into the brain, seeing the blood flow through and then drain out through the venous system, which is what you'll see in blue. So this is a dynamic wow. view. And you can only get this if you're able to continually rotate with that type of resolution. And that was a major breakthrough that is available on, on this uh, 320 slice wow. uh, scanner. And you know, now I could see why you get so excited. Isn't because that cool? Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun to watch your excitement and your passion. And again, it just feels so good to know that, you know, if needed, well, if needed or when needed, I'm in good hands. <laughs> well, one thing that you have to keep in mind is you know, images can look cool, but you have to be careful particularly in the CT arena. You always want to be careful about the use of, of technology and that there aren't any chances for being injured, and you pay a lot of attention to that. CT in particular had received some um, criticism uh, starting maybe a decade or so ago because the technology started to evolve to be able to do close to this, not with the type of precision that you're seeing here, but the excitement was just as much then. I mean, the first time they saw anything close to this, right, let's use it, use right, it, use it. Yeah. And it became overused, and mm. it became overused in a way that caused people to worry about the dose. So it turned out back 10 years ago on those types of scanners, you do one of those scans, and people are worrying about whether or not it could cause cancer because you've got radiation that's being used. So the scanners have evolved, and this particular scanner, what we like most about it is that that scan that you're seeing there doesn't cause any more radiation than basically living on Earth for a year. And that's the oh. type of reference that we have. In fact, oh. if you live in Denver, or if you do a lot of airplane flights, you're getting more radiation than you get out of one of those types right, of scans. Right. And that's what became critical. That is really good, because I know a lot of people ask about the radiation and uh, why they would choose one over the other, because one of them doesn't have the radiation. Was it, would that be the... Uh, MRI uh, does not have radiation. Because right. that's uh, right. the... the uh, Say how it is, the MRI. So magnetic, magnetic, magnetic resonance mm -hmm. imaging. It's a, it's yeah, it a, it's a lot of, it's a lot of big words, but <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, you, you got me with you, folks, because I'm here just like you watching, and I'm trying to understand all this too. So I'm going to keep asking the questions so that you get this information firsthand. <laughs> well, so, CT's principle is a little bit easier to understand because it's take an X-ray beam and. It gets stopped by bones, <laughs> and then it creates a shadow at the other end, and you reconstruct the bony part of it. An MRI, ah. it's like, what in the world is magnetic it's resonance resonant. imaging? Well, the, the, the it makes a lot of noise, I know that. It can make some noise, and there are reasons for that, and they're becoming quieter, and that's one of the evolutions in MRI, is to oh, make it more comfortable nice. for everyone, because you know, you're know you going to lay in there for a little bit, and you don't want to feel you know, yeah. scared. Yeah. So, um, But magnetic resonance imaging, the magnetic part of it, it's, it's pretty cool. The, the magnetic resonance imaging primarily is looking at water. And, and that's what you're predominantly made of. Your soft tissues are made of water. And, and, uh, and at the microscopic level, water, H2O, the H in it is a proton, and it actually has a magnetic characteristic. So you're able to oh. pull out the density of water instead of the density of bone, and that becomes an, an emission that comes out as opposed to an x-ray that you put in. So it, it's, it's a pretty cool technology that doesn't have any radiation. Wow, amazing, amazing. And let's, let's move into, I don't, don't sure. want us to, to forget about the uh, non-neuroimaging and also um, how, it, how this uh, future projects with athletes yeah, too as yeah. well. Yeah, no, absolutely. There might be some images that I can pull up absolutely. to show you that. Absolutely, yeah, that'd be great. Let me see if I can find a couple that would make some sense here. Yeah, I'll take a pause here and find something that makes sense. Oh, th this happens to be an example of that blood flow and to see how it might be feeding or how it might be interfered with a tumor that happens to be in there. So very applicable to looking at characteristics oh. of, of tumors and how they're being fed. I think I've got a few examples. This is a moving a little bit more away from the brain and into the flow that's dynamically going up through the carotids. You can feel your carotids. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. So, so that's an example that's moving a little bit away from the brain into other body parts. And it's again a contrast injection that's very safe and you track over 
several rotations, the blood as it's flowing up. Let's stay in the neck. Wow. Some people have had yes. spinal hardware put oh, in. Yes. This used to be a real problem uh -huh. because the, the hardware itself used to create horrible artifacts. And you would like to know information about the hardware. Is it stable? Is it in the bone properly? Right, right. And the detail, <laughs> just take a peek at it. You can actually see the threads on the screws. Yes, I do. <laughs> so, so we're moving a little bit down the body. and You can see how this, this resolution is able to be applied in, in all body parts. And even though you're collecting a bunch of these cross-sectional slices, it's such high resolution that you get, you get a volume of data and you can reconstruct it however you want. There's a few other examples that I'd like to show you that might move uh, a little bit further down. I'm going to skip by that one. It's more hardware in the spine. Did you ever hear of people that have problems with their TMJ? Yes. Is that it on the screen? That's a TMJ. And Isn't what they're looking funny? for You got is like to the see, greatest... Uh, uh, yeah, I know. you get how excited <laughs> and, you get with this. And, yeah. and what's, what's neat is that, you know, we, we start out as, as a neurology-driven organization, and neuroimaging is a... Fast is a is a great component of of of, um, of neurology, but the technology that's there and the technicians that are the technologists that are that are running those systems are are quite capable of taking advantage. So I, I think there is not another scanner like this in an outpatient setting. Wow! And the mantra of the dent wow. is to keep people out of the hospital and to mm, make nice. it so that people don't have to go there even for tests as much as possible. So. Once we have that technology, and that's our purpose, keep people out of the hospital, do research to make it so that we, we catch things early and the diagnostics of imaging help to catch things early and be able to treat things early so they don't end up in the hospital. But what about the people that have orthopedic conditions or other conditions? Exactly. And yes, they can go to other imaging centers as well, but because we've invested in the top-of-the-line equipment related to our neuroimaging research, education, our our involvement in societies nationally and such means that we always want to stay at that cutting edge. Uh, we can share that technology for all body parts. And that's why we're able to move into these other areas. Wow. And our imaging center that has perhaps previously been noted as being a neurology type of a center is actually more than capable more than to take there. this technology yes. and apply it in so many other areas. Wow. And, and there's um, a different view that shows some hardware that's been used to help repair the jaw. Um, but I think I'm going to skip to something, if, I, if you don't mind, because there's all sorts of ideas that you can get out of all the different applications. But I wanted to show you something that I'm particularly enamored with. This is incredible. I'm loving these images that you're doing, and I'm, mm -hmm. we're winding down so quickly, too, yeah, so I want to make sure you down, get in so here. I want, to show, I want to show two more examples, because Absolutely. I think this is the coup de grace. This is a child that has a trachea that might have some obstruction, some difficulty. You cannot do a CT on, pediatri on pediatrics with a dynamic without this low-dose technique. Oh, pediatrics yeah. is, 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 is becoming one of our biggest wow. referrals because you don't want to expose the kids to the dose, and yet you can do this type of a scan oh, that's with, amazing. without much dose at all. That's that well amazing. below background levels. And let me finish with the, with the coolest technology, and that is getting into the chest. Wow. Looking at the lungs, but let me show you the heart. Wow. The heart has one problem when it comes to imaging. It doesn't stop, and you kind of don't want it to. <laughs> so to get these kinds of snapshots when the no heart is intended. beating, yeah. But let me show you. The, but it doesn't stop, but let me show you what you can really do with this. Okay, there's the heart oh, on a my CT. Goodness. Isn't that wild? Wow. And if someone wow. has any kind of a blockage, you're really able to pick that up. And we're starting to see it used in almost a concierge way. People are they hit 55 years old. They've had some history in the family. They just want to come in, and they want to see how their coronaries look. Well, I think I might make an appointment and do that, too, then. <laughs> I'm um, in my 50s, and that's all I'm saying. <laughs> so I'm not implying anything. Anyway. <laughs> but it is, it, it is is exactly what you said, that preventative medicine, right. so that we could know what's going on with our bodies before something serious happens. Right, and, and the relationships that we have with uh, the cardiologists in the community, the orthopedic surgeons in the community are, are so strong. So we work in a very collaborative way, and, and these technologies are not applied in ways that are inconsistent with how our collegial professionals that refer to us would like to see those scans done. So it, it works out well for everybody in the community that we've evolved our practice
from the beginnings of imaging and this comprehensive concept of neurology and diagnostics to expanding an imaging capability that includes pediatrics. I mean, it almost brings tears to your eyes when you can see the yes. type of things that you can do for the kids that can come in here that Absolutely. you just can't do. Or they'll end up in a hospital or... Exactly. I mean, what, what kid wants to end up in a hospital to do this That's what I love. Here? One of the things that you said that's really standing out in my mind is, is preventative so that you don't have to go into the hospital, that you don't have to get a serious illness, that you can come here and you can get imaging and know what's going on before hopefully you don't even have to get into the hospital. Well, time has just flown by and I am once again so impressed and excited about the medical breakthroughs and technology that you've been doing here and I just thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to share with our viewers this amazing thank information. Thank, thank you. you. It is it is a wonderful feeling to be able to contribute to the oh. community in the way that we do. Thank you so much for Thank you. Thank for you. Well, I hope you took lots of notes because we've got some amazing information today and that information brings us power if we act on it. So make sure that you watch, re-watch, follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. You can watch these programs over and over and again so that you have the power to make changes in your life. So stay tuned for your health tip for today and a message from a few more of our sponsors. This is Anna Marie Sinatra from Sinatra Solutions and host of Health Matters with your healthy tip. Create a Word document and write down your name, your address, your phone number, your email, and your health insurance carrier. Then the next paragraph is your family history. There is where you want to list what illnesses or diseases, both on your mother and father's side, are there. And if they've passed, you want to write that information down too. Next, you want to write your history. Anytime you've been hospitalized or an accident, illnesses, very important to write this down. Then the next section is medications and or supplements. Very important to keep this updated too because they might interact with one another. It's important to let your doctor know this information. Now you'll be ready when you go to the doctors. You won't have to fill out all that paperwork. You can just write in there, please see attached and give this information to the office staff and you'll be all set. Hi, I'm Kimberly Will from Mr. Frank's and I'm a proud sponsor of Health Matters and I am very motivated and inspired by all of the information that the show offers. Hi, I'm Kim. I'm Mitch from Pure Life Energy Saunas. And together we are proud sponsors of Health Matters, a program that educates the community on how to be healthy, mind, body, and spirit. So follow us because your health matters. We want to thank Marge Reed from the Healing Spa. Marge is an ordained unity minister. She has her BA in complementary health and she's joined by her beautiful daughter Gina who's a registered nurse. Together they bring us the latest technology in stemmology, skin care, stem cell therapy, and holistic modalities for your body, mind, and spirit. Join Marge on Sunday mornings for her 11 a.m. service.